that's your point of argument. No, no, no. What I'm trying to say is like, so, uh, so women never try. No, no. So women never try. Okay, no dressing decently. Yeah. In your understanding, because in everybody understand dressing decent in different way. Because when people say if your cloth is above your knee, if it's on your knee, if it's like literally to covered. the ground, everything. So covered. everyone have different understanding of decency. So in your own perspective, you're saying that when a woman isn't dressing decent to your own understanding, it leads to her being raped. Yeah, possibly. Wow. So now you're taking the blame away for the men that raped the women down to the they women both, that... They are both blame. Like, the men is blame. Both... Hello, guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel at Peace Makeover. Today, I'm joined by... The Perseverance, guys. We're going to be checking out Non-Muslim Explains Islam. Hmm. Oh, guys, this is surprising. Like, how can Non-Muslim explain Islam? Like, okay, it's like me explaining... Um, Jewism, like how do you want to explain how the Jews work? We studied it, or we were one of them before, <laughs> and yeah, you choose not to be again. Yeah, like you, you uh, left the religion. Converted, so yeah. You're like, oh, this height was when I was there. You are an but atheist. <laughs> well, maybe it's yeah. an atheist. An atheist, you have little or no idea of it. Uh, maybe you studied about uh, them, probably. Maybe. But they have classes. For yeah, that's religion. But I feel if you're going for a class for a religion, then you may convert to it. Like if you're yes. learning it, say so I love this religion, I want to be like them. Probably sometimes some people convert, but it's basically for knowledge. Sure, sure, sure. So guys, without further ado, let's, let's get started. I'm going to explain how me, a current non-Muslim, understands Islam. For the last three years, I've been on a journey to explore and understand Islam. I well, I love the fact she wears the hijab. One term at university, I lived in the Muslim country of Malaysia, and I've questioned Malaysia. many Malaysia. about Islam. And also I do want Indonesia to say that too. this journey that. over the last two years has made me realize how misinformed and kind of uneducated non-Muslims in the West are about Islam. They can be quite judgmental, but Islam is very beautiful religion. So let's understand. As we all know, there is the Quran. The Quran is really like the guidance for Muslims. Mm. You can go to the Quran, you can read parts of the Quran if you're ever having a problem. How does the Quran advise you to address this problem? This is really the holy book and the fundamentals of Islam. Muslims also can refer to the Hadith. The Hadith is really, in simple words, the teaching and words from the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad, he was sent here by Allah, the God, to really help Muslims on earth, guide them on how to do things correctly in accordance with Islam. So Muslims really look at both books and both books are really seen as very vital when understanding Islam. One of the first things I ever learned about Islam is to preserve life at all costs. Now I thought this was such a beautiful thing, it stuck in my head since day one learning about Islamic studies. Since going into my Islamic studies class where my Islamic teacher was like, Anna, what are you doing here? As one of a minority of non-Muslims at my university, she was quite confused as well in class but I just wanted to learn and I remember one of her first things she ever taught me about Islam was reserve life at all costs and that fundamentally does mean that if you have to bend some of the guidance from the Quran in order to preserve your life or others then you can do so. Islam is built on five pillars as my understanding. First of all we have the Shahada. The Shahada is your profession of faith and this goes by saying there is no God but God and Muhammad the messenger of God. So you're really saying that there's only one God, Allah, and also yeah, his messenger that came to spread the word of Islam here on earth. Islam in general is really such a beautiful religion because it's just all about being such a good person. It's not like a cult or something like this. It's about being such a good person. And I'm going to get on to this in just a second. The second pillar of Islam is the Salat. And these are the five Muslim prayers that you will do throughout the day. And you will pray to God. And it's actually quite important to do these five prayers. In Islam, as long as your intention is good, your intention is clear, that is honestly what matters so much. If you can't do everything that the Quran expects or wants of you. If your intention is clear, but you just can't quite get to it today, it's okay, I think. The third pillar of Islam is 
zakat. Zakat is donating to charity. Usually every year, a percentage of your wealth you should try and donate to charity. Again, what a beautiful idea. We should all be doing this anyway. The fourth pillar of Islam is Som, which is your fasting during Ramadan. During the holy month of Ramadan, you need to try and refrain True. from eating and drinking during the sunlight hours. But it goes more than that. Ramadan is really about cleansing your mind. Try not to go Gossip. Try not to swear. Definitely not drinking alcohol, which you shouldn't be doing in Islam anyway. But it's also about doing good deeds, giving to charity. Every good deed that a Muslim will do during Ramadan is actually doubled in the good deeds. Not even doubled, it's like times 70. It's really a lot. So during Ramadan, the holy month, you should try and give and do as many good things as you can and just forget about the bad things. We as humans sin every day, but God forgives us for this. During Ramadan, really take that extra effort to try and not do these bad things. The fifth pillar of Islam is Hajj. Hajj is your pilgrimage to Saudi Arabia, to Mecca, and you will go there and do all the holy things that the Prophet once did. You kind of follow in his footsteps around doing what he did before. What I will say here is you only do this if you can afford to do it because it is a little bit expensive and if you're actually healthy enough. So. All right, moving on to haram and halal. We all know these terms, even if you're non-Muslim, we've known this for a long time. Haram, halal. So haram is something that is forbidden in Islam. Now, I wanted to get onto this as soon as possible because I know in the West, non-Muslims are like, oh, how can something be forbidden? Like that is just so restrictive. It's not like this. Things that are haram are haram for a reason. There is always a reason behind something that you should or shouldn't do in Islam. For example, as we all know, Muslims are forbidden to drink alcohol. Alcohol is haram. As I believe before, people were actually, this might be wrong, but this is what I have read and discussed with some of my Muslim students. Back before, you actually were allowed to drink one glass of one. However, there was two problems here. First of all, the size of the glass. Everyone's glass was different. It meant that everyone was consuming different amounts of alcohol. Number two, this led to some people getting drunk off maybe even one glass. It was forbidden. And why fundamentally was alcohol forbidden in Islam? Because as we know, if you do drink alcohol, or as you are aware, if you don't drink alcohol, alcohol makes you drunk. What happens when you're drunk? Sometimes your vision is blurred. You certainly can't remember what you're doing. You're unaware of your actions and how they are affecting others. You can definitely sin and do bad things. Another example, pork. Pork is forbidden because of the enzymes that can be bad for our health. The pig is seen as a dirty animal because the pig eats anything. It eats trash, it eats plastic, it eats honestly anything. And that is why, again, it is forbidden in Islam. Everything that is haram has a reason. Moving on to halal, halal things. What are what does halal mean? Halal is something that is okay in Islam. So for example, halal meat is slaughtered in a very specific way that is in accordance with the Sharia law. It means that the prayer has been done on the animal and the animal was not made to suffer during the slaughter, which is obviously very beneficial for the animal because we do eat meat and we don't want the animals to suffer when we do slaughter. Them. Now, moving on to a topic that is definitely misunderstood in Islam for non-Muslims in the West specifically is women in Islam. And today I actually was reading this book about the status of women in Islam. Now this is a very lovely book, I do suggest you go and read it. It's by Dr. Jamal A. Badawi. As I have grown with Islam and learned about Islam over the last three years, I've definitely understood something here. Now, non-Muslims, specifically in the West, do look at Islam as this is oppressive, restrictive. Now, I want to put a clause here because there are some countries Thank you. that have become extreme. Now that moves away from the fundamentals of Islam and becomes extreme. If we stick in the realm of good Islamic practice, if we look at a country like Malaysia, the fundamentals of women in Islam is really to protect the woman. The woman is seen as this precious, beautiful flower and rose guidance is in place to make sure that she has a beautiful life. She plays to her strength. In Islam, men and women are physically, psychologically different. And I know people in the West want to think like men and women are exactly biologically the same, but biologically we're not the same. We are more emotional as women and that's why guidance is put in place in Islam.
job to ensure that women are always protected. This book is very interesting because it is saying that prehistorically in Christian times, in Catholic times, women were not equal like men. Women were seen as down here. But all this period of time when in the West women are starting to get more rights, which is fantastic, I'm all for that. But in Islam, the rights have always been there. Women have always had the right to own their property, lease out their property. In Islam, the woman's money is for her. It is the man's responsibility to even ensure the wife is cared for, the children are cared for, the family is cared for. That responsibility is passed to the man to ensure the woman can do her womanly things that come naturally to her, child rearing, having children, taking care of the family. I'm not saying that this is exactly correct, but I'm saying this is what the fundamentals of Islam is, that the woman plays to her strength, which is the emotional bond with children, raising the family. The man goes out, he provides, takes care of the family, and doesn't give that stress to the woman. That is honestly the fundamentals that I understand from Islam. And to me, I do think that's very beautiful. Um, if you are a woman who wants to have a family, if you marry into a Muslim family, if your partner is Muslim, he is going to want to take care of you so that you can take care of the children, if that's what you want. This book explains that Islam has never stopped women from having a job. It has been the case where if she needs to get a job, she can get one. But if she doesn't need to, she can choose not to have a job. That's what I understand. And I know sometimes that, again, people in the West might jump to conclusions with things about inheritance because there are very interesting laws when it comes to inheritance when there is a daughter and a son. I don't know specifically, I would have to go and research more, but I know that oftentimes the male will get more money than the female and of course we jump to conclusions and think this is so wrong, like that's ridiculous, but again as I've explained, if the female is marrying into a Muslim household, the man is Muslim, he will be providing for her. Any money she earns, she keeps for herself, but the son will then have to provide for the wife and the children. So so that's why he gets more. Again, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, this is just what I understand. And just on the topic of women in Islam, I just want to read one very interesting passage from this book that said, Prophet Muhammad said, the most perfect believers are the best in conduct and the best of you are those who are best to their wives. It means that in Islam, they've always wanted the best for women. You treat women so well. Again, in Islam, your mother is so important. Paradise is beneath the mother foot in Islam. There's another beautiful thing that Prophet Muhammad said when someone asked Prophet Muhammad, like, he said, a man came to Prophet Muhammad asking, messenger of God, who among the people is the most worthy of my good company? The Prophet said, your mother. The man said, who else? The Prophet said, your mother. The man asked, then who else? Only then did Prophet Muhammad say, your father. So like the women are just so important in Islam is what I understand. And above all else, guys, in the Quran, it says, always ask questions. Muslims, men and women, doesn't matter, have always been told that it's okay to ask questions. They can even ask questions about their religion. They can go to a man and ask him, why? Why do we do this? And he will give a valid response. It's more than okay to ask questions in Islam. And that, being able to be free to ask those questions, means that Islam is not worried about saying the wrong answer. They know the answer will be correct. They know how to teach her to be a good human being. If you like this video, I know you're gonna love this video where I ask my Muslim friend, more questions that non-Muslims like me are really confused about. Wow. This was amazing. This was amazing and very, very educative. I'll use that word. Uh, hello, Asmois. Throughout the entire video, how she was really excited. That for me, got me through. I love it. Um, I love when she started from the Quran, the Hadith. Then she started telling us the do and do, haram mm. and halal. Hala. It's very, very nice. Um, basically, Everything she said right here, I've actually um, heard them before, at least 95% of what she explained to us right here, I've, I know about them before, because um, I have a Muslim friend who educates me, and also I've watched a couple of videos about Muslim stuff, so I've heard them before, and it's really, really true when she said, um, Muslim is a peaceful religion for me, yeah, that's true, I support it. It's just the Western world um, propagating that also, their movies is actually like, having the concepts like women are actually oppressed and that is false because um, I've seen Muslim women um, my friend also have told me about this before that they are more free than you even imagine like they are free to do what they do 
what they want is just their boundaries like you have to follow the head covering because that itself is in the Quran. The woman covering their hair is part of their religion, something you have to do. And they are not forced to do it. It's something that they love within them. They love doing. And covering your body, it's also part of it. Aside the hair covering your also your body too, you have to cover it. It's meant for your husband alone to see. And I see meaningful reason for that because most most of the women that I've actually um, heard about, I've never heard about most of the women being raped or stuff like that. Mm. I've, I heard about that. Uh, I've never heard such um, incidents before because I feel like when they are covered, it takes away attention. So you are saying that um, not covering your body leads to being raped? No, no, no. Like some people um, have been raped through. That's, that's that's your topic. That's your point of argument. No, no, no. What I'm trying to say is like, so, uh, so women have tried. No, no. So women have tried. Okay, not dressing decently. Yeah. In your understanding, because in everybody understands understand dressing decent in different way. Because some people say if your cloth is above your knee, if it's on your knee, if it's like literally to covered. the ground. Everything so covered. everyone have different understanding of decency. So in your own perspective, you're saying that when a woman isn't dressing decent to your own understanding, it leads to her being raped. Yeah, possibly. Wow. So now you're taking the blame away for the men that raped the women down to the they women are both, that... They are both blamed. Like, the men is blamed. Both blamed. The men is yeah. blamed for raping the women. What I'm trying to say is... You hardly hear um, okay. some news coming out if like, you're your wait, phone in wait, your wait, hand wait, I'm saying something. And someone steals it. You are being blamed for holding the phone in your hand. Let me say something. Wow. You hardly hear rumors or things of most of women being raped. You hardly hear such incidents because they are mostly covered. And you hardly see news. I've never heard the news that, I, that a Muslim woman was raped. But I've heard news that some ladies have been raped. And if you watch the video, or if there, were, if there was a video, or you you see the news, the picture of the lady that was being raped, you see what she's wearing, like it's actually exposed. I'm not saying it's justified men raping women. It's just like Muslim women are less victims to that because I've never heard it before. Uh, of most of women be raped, so that is it. Hmm. Oh. In essence, you are blaming women for them being raped because of their dressing. Okay, you are misogynist. Well, guys, this was a wonderful video. Uh, minus everything he said about rape and women, I don't agree with that, but other than that. So it's a wonderful video. I really enjoyed it. I love the fact that she was able to explain about Islam despite the fact that she's not um, in the religion. She's just learning about it. I, I also love the fact she's taking her time. Like She's going through it, enjoying it, and sooner or later she'll be a convert. But this was interesting. I would love to see more videos of her explaining and telling us things about the religion. I would love to listen to more of her videos her voice is beautiful the way she talks is lovely like if she were to be a teacher like you're teaching islam or something like you really enjoy it because she's saying everything so smoothly she's just taking her time she's explaining it based off her own understanding and i really did enjoy it so please let us know what you think about our reaction please mention to like subscribe and share our videos we'll see, see you in the next one, one.